<clears throat> a longer cough this time but <laughs> what's good to everybody uh that man trip in the building no cool down podcast is in your eardrums right now episode 61 feeling real good uh hey, it's, it's time it's time we have some fun man it's time we have some fun really another another edition of one of the most must-see podcasts on Z damn internet and of course i'm joined by my podcast partner in crime when easy when how you doing dog i'm doing pretty well man can't complain Mhm. Listen, it's been a it's been a decent week so far. And yes, King is uh absent uh from today's episode. He is out with a stub toe. We wish him a speedy recovery over the coming days and 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 hope it is not serious beyond that. <laughs> but no, no, no. <laughs> it's just uh, I'll bust it cuz there's but he'll be back next week and all that stuff. So, yeah. Uh he's oh, he's so lucky we don't do the video version no more like the super mm-hmm. video. Oh, I would have had a I would have had a me I, I was cooking up some meme for the absent pick. Oh my goodness. All right, anyway, it's all good. But what isn't absent and should never be absent is y'all going to all audio, all podcast audio platforms and rating this five stars. Going to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, just search no cool down or be right there. Also, check us on YouTube, youtube.com slash at no cool down. Catch all the videos, you know what I'm saying? Some one-off stuff that we don't even do on the podcast now. Some s- exclusive content, man. You may, you might want to tap in. Might want to tap in. Shorts daily, videos every week. Stuff you do not want to miss in video form. So make sure you get it in over there. And uh, yeah, without further ado, we can get to stuff this week. I actually saw a, a fair bit of, of, of footage, details, and developments from all over the gaming spot. So uh, if you want to get into a warm-up first and get into the main stories, uh, when is you ready? I'm ready. Right, let's get to it, man. Without further ado, let's get to it. So, uh, first story this is something really small, but this was honestly this is the greatest thing ever. I'm gonna be real. This is this is gonna be the the greatest thing I've possibly ever seen. So, the hit game series Farming Simulator. Basically, I I I just, I just thought it was basically that at the surface level. You know, you you know, go some tractors, do your thing here and there, but apparently there's there's more to it it's deeper than rap it's deeper than just getting in your tractor and going in and moving around on the game the devs of the game giant software they spoke this week on how basically companies are going to start they've been sending them detailed tractor and farming equipment blueprints to make like for like you know in-game replicas so people can actually go test out you know certain farming products how it would look how it would move before they purchase so you know like in the beginning of the the game's life cycle giant software was just talking about how you know they ask companies for permission but now almost uh, like hella hella farming brands are like chomping at the bit like waiting in line rushing in line like trying to throw money at them and you know trying to get in the game and so the devs have to now pick and choose what companies and brands are going to be included in the game so like thoughts on like, like this like actual real world application this is insane uh i think it's pretty funny it's it's also like shows like uh, i i don't think that when they made farming simulator people were really expecting this to take off i thought they i feel like they thought it was going to be a little bit of a niche and it's so funny to see like the impact of this this franchise I am really happy for the farming simulator fan base. Like you guys are, you guys are cooking, man. Keep going. I, I'm happy for everything that you guys are getting. Like the esports, everything that's going on. It's so funny. I, I love seeing farming simulator content, bro. Honestly, like when you think about, like, oh yeah, what are the most impactful games in gaming history? You know what I'm saying? It will be farming simulator doesn't really come up, but when you think about it. Like it, having an actual real world impact beyond this stuff, you know what I'm saying? Like, like, yo, you're actually affecting the business of an entire industry at large just by you being in the game and people running around with you on a controller. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's insane. That's insane impact, bro. We gonna have conversations about Farmer Simulator. Use I used to crack jokes on y'all, but yeah, 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 yeah. I got, yeah, I got the juice, man. Yeah, I got the juice. Who's doing it like Farmer Simulator for real? Not many. You know what I'm saying? I don't see no plumbers playing Mario and stuff like that. They doing real stuff. I, you know, that's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Farming Simulator might really have the juice. <laughs> oh, man. All right. So moving on to the next topic here. For the first time in a little while, actually, GameStop, they're profitable. They're in the green. They posted a profit of $48.2 million for Q4 of 2022. And that came after a lot of changes that, you know, were basically in the midst of happening. Uh, you know, kind of shifted the focus to e-commerce and collectible sales like Funko's being a big booster in these times. They, they changed their CEO, a lot of the backroom staff. Uh, you know, are are they on an, a, a continual uptrend? Have they hit a corner? Has GameStop really, you know, somehow, again, hit a corner and might be on the up again? Uh, I think what, what's might be going on is i mean a, a variety of things but i just think that gamestop is probably one of the be- one of the go-to spots for certain 
things, especially gaming, um, gaming like mem not memorabilia, but gaming uh, things in general, the like uh, and all Funkos. That. Yeah, merchandise, exactly. Funkos, things like that. Um, I personally am have never been like I need to go to GameStop to do anything outside <laughs> of maybe buying a physical <laughs> Switch game, and even then, it is on a very different basis because when I go to GameStop. I've I've gone to GameStop multiple times and they've not had what I needed. So I've been I went to Target and Walmart. So it's really interesting to see them like profitable. Um, I would say shout out to them, but they're like a million dollar company. Like a they're they'll be okay regardless of what happens. Uh, shout out to the shout out to the GameStop employees. Those are the only people, but not the not the weird ones. So shout uh. out to like the cool <laughs> GameStop employees. I like those guys, the ones who are like, hey man. Do you have this game? And he's like, nah. And I'm like, damn, that sucks. He's like, yeah, bro. Not the like, well, why are you buying this? Like, <laughs> not not the not the people who think they know what they want, man. Like, <laughs> give me give me the cool GameStop employee who definitely knows that th his job sucks, but is like a cool dude, anyways. That's who who we're shouting out today. Nah, facts. Shout out to the cool ones. Shout out to the cool ones. We see you. We see you. But yeah, join join's crazy about GameStop. I'll be real. Like, yo, game them actually surviving you again like they tried to the brick and mortar thing and try to be like you know a bit of more of a cooler spot than that kind of ran dry they were like okay we might liquidate like it might be a rat for us but then they had a real turnaround and i feel like again there was about a lot of stories circulating about how um after the new ceo came in or the the new cio whoever, whoever the hell it was he like basically was like yeah a lot of these people gotta get fired because these people who are currently in power y'all suck y'all are terrible y'all are like actually ass so the replacements and all this the change that i've been making with you know with the focus on e-commerce stuff and just changing their direction it's been working out so i again i uh for for the for the cool people who are in those jobs, you know what I'm saying, at the ground level, long may it continue. Hope y'all still around, you know what I'm saying, not stinking up the joint and making GameStop a better place. So shout out to y'all. Shout out to y'all. Moving on here, some news broke that former Bioware head Mark Dara has come back to the studio to work on Dragon Age Dreadwolf. Now, at this point, the game is in post-production, getting touched up and boosted in different areas. And this has been coupled with some news that we got that the Mass Effect team is assisting with production and that there is no rush to push the game at this time so again they're going step by step they're bringing back in some former veterans to to make dreadwolf happen how do you feel about this uh i mean like i think it's gonna be cool um i think i haven't really seen too much about dreadwolf and i think that's a really really good sign in my opinion i don't really want to see too much about this game um i'm happy that they're getting more people on the project i feel like it could uh potentially hopefully be beneficial to them as long as it doesn't really slow anything else down but uh not gonna lie to you as of right now me personally i'm not really excited for any bioware game like i'm not really excited for a new mass effect i'm not excited for a new dragon age but if it means like slowing down like slowing mass effect down to make dragon age a better game and then like sw swapping over you know like we'll help you you help us type vibe uh, i'm all for it because honestly the the past few except for maybe inquisition the past few ma like bioware games really haven't hit so i think mm -hmm. that they really need to slow things down for sure yeah. um and i can't say inquisition was the best game because i only played a small amount my boy really enjoyed it so i'm going off of his opinion mm. um i think that dragon age like well, well, the games before after inquisition were what mass effect andromeda mm -hmm. and anthem, anthem. like mm. i think if they want to return to form they really need it they really need to come out swinging and i think the fact that i haven't heard anything about dragon age and that they're taking their time with it that's a really really good sign mm. i i agree i agree and i feel like very rarely at least not it's pretty uncommon that you know veterans and stuff of the bioware or not, not even or just in general a gaming industry or gaming company teams leave and then come back you know what i'm saying to assist something maybe i don't know what the issue was or, or what just happened maybe it was just a change of heart but again mark dar has been at the heart of dragon age he again he oversaw a lot of dragon age one i'm pretty sure no i think it was mainly two where he directed and uh produced a lot of the shit um i'm pretty sure it was mostly dragon age two but then he was there he he is he has bioware dna like he literally has bioware dna he's been you know again a, a veteran of that studio for a very long time so seeing somebody come back and bring that knowledge and that the, the spirit of you know 
by aware that when they're in form and stuff and they're when they were hungry and all that stuff and just knowing what to really infuse into the game's experience i think that's important i think that's you know something that is very overlooked and it's something that more people should be looking at you know in terms of if you want to get into the analytics and particulars of a game's development cycle and how you want to predict how good it will be in the interim because something similar happened with a company well i wouldn't say similar well dissimilar on the opposite end of the spectrum uh, some people left a certain game and then you know got delayed there was a bunch of stuff you know people getting mad at it i'm saying cough cough the game is suicide squad killer justice league you know what i'm saying but that that can have a big impact on how a game is developed so seeing a veteran come back into the fold to really help out that process is good and again i agree with you seeing the mass effect team as well jump in uh, it lets me know that one Again, it's a really collaborative effort, so everybody's going to put all hands on deck to make sure it's as good, a po good as possible. And two, they're not really rushing anything on any front. Not Dragon Age, not Mass Effect. And you're right. That's what Bioware needs. Bioware needs to not rush and make this as good a game as possible. As, as from, from the neutral perspective, with no bias aside at all, I think Bioware as a studio needs to, again, this this needs to be a really big, a really impactful, really quality drop the first time around when they come with Dragon Age, um, Dragon Age Red Wolf. This is kind of like, it's kind of like a prove it deal type of situation. Like when you come out, like, okay, is this going to be more the Bioware of old? Are we going to tap in, tap back into what you do? Or are we just going to completely, you know, shut you out because Anthem was the last thing that we got from you guys. You know what I'm saying? Like it, they're trying to beat that, the beat that level of momentum or negative momentum so to speak or that or that or that connotation that their name has as of late and you know they got to make something great to come out of the you know come out swinging so they can again set up for the next project so people can really look forward to them as uh with my biases intact y'all need to make this game good so all all doubt can be kept moved aside for mass effect when y'all drop that joint I'm excited for Mass Effect when you do it in any case. I'm excited for Mass Effect in any way, shape, or form. So, y'all need to make sure Dragon Age Dreadwolf is good as hell so y'all can clear the pathway, clear the runway, because when Mass Effect come through, it better be fire. That's all I know. That's all I know, mm -hmm. bro. I'm I'm, <laughs> I'm getting the pitchforks together for this right in front of the Citadel, bro. It's going to be a wrap for that joint ass. I promise. On everything. On everything. So, I wish them the best of luck, but I do agree. They're, I think they're doing the right things to make this a really good experience. So shout out to them. All right. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. So after Ubisoft promised a strong presence at E3 this year, they, they fully backed out, man. They announced this week that they're dubbing E3. They were joining other, other big companies, you know, hosting their own separate events. And Ubisoft 4 is going to happen on June 12th in L.A. I know we talked about this a little bit extensively uh, on our YouTube channel. Check it out at YouTube.com slash at no cooldown. But just again, just a, just a quick revisit on Ubisoft saying they're going to have a strong lineup. They're going to be a, they're going to be, you know, Iron Fist strong presence and then a week later they just like back out They're like now nah, we're not going to be there yeah i mean like i don't know if i should like be sad really um mostly because like uh i i'm not gonna say it. Uh, ubisoft is a company that makes some pretty solid games and i think that um while some people may be upset i just know my my experience with ubisoft and their showcases usually involves like a 15 minute dance number from like just dance and then they show me like a new south park game which i like the south park games i don't really need a deep dive into the south park games though and then after that it's like i don't know i i wasn't really excited for ubisoft to begin with and now that they're not going it kind of i feel more bad for 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 e for e3 than for anybody who was going to watch that to begin with like it, it sucks more for them than it does for us is how i feel about it nah, i i uh i don't care I, like, yeah I, like I, <laughs> I don't care i don't i'm sorry guys like i don't care about ubisoft skipping out on this because really you was going to show like you're going you're to finally show a trailer of like uh, let me guess assassin's creed mirage and tell us it's going to be delayed like you're gonna sell show us that again, like it's 15. I'm gonna I mean, increase it 20 minutes of just dance gameplay and random people dancing and, and, and rabbits and bears and stuff doing dance routines in the front row of a random theater. Uh, Aisha Tyler, love her by the way, but Aisha mm -hmm. Tyler throughout the throughout the whole damn thing, busting jokes for about a good 30 minutes, just eating up time with random things that don't necessarily, you know, are are conducive to a heavy gaming show or a quality gaming announcement show. And 
that's just gonna be it is what it is you're gonna do your thing and e3 is literally a barren wasteland you remember the beginning of this movie rango you remember he's just on the Ooh. road and the tumbleweeds are going past that's e3 that's you walking yeah. into the entrance of e3 because that show floor looking bare bare empty bro looking bare empty and that's and that the lineup online all the conference stuff Oh, it's re- it's really gonna be just PC gaming show, bro. It's oh no, I'm not watching it. At that point, at that point, is it even E3 or is it yeah. PC gaming show? And and it, and it's after Summer Game Fest, bro. Jeff won. Jeff really won. Jeff Keeley. Yeah. Jeff Keeley's a mastermind, bro. I don't I, I don't know if you saw it, but literally this after like literally the day of when uh everyone's like yo oh, yeah um Ubisoft backed out, uh, Xbox all these people backing out. They're having all this fear around E3. Jeff Keighley tweeted, he was tweeting the words of that Calvin Harris song, and it was like, don't you worry, child. And he was just holding up the heart and, and a gif. And I was like, bro, this guy's the pettiest man in the land, bro. He's he's a demon. Jeff Keighley's a demon, bro. But I mean, like, honestly. I respect the grind. I respect it, honestly. If Jeff Keighley is the one who manages his own Instagram, not Instagram, uh, Twitter, and saw all the things that a lot of y'all were saying about E3, like, I'd be petty, too. Because I like shoes. You guys, you guys was talking mad brazy, but like, if Jeff Keighley closed down Summer Games Fest, you wouldn't have anything to watch for E3. All the people, all the people who whose literal uh, content and and careers are like, this is the time where you guys talk the most. This is the the, the place that you get the most content. Facts. And y'all, y'all bit the hand that feeds you because of something that you thought was better, and then here we are, bro. Mm-hmm. Like it's 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 welcome to the new world order. You should have saw this coming from a, from a mile away. Facts. Like, I love E3, but I'm sorry to tell y'all Facts. the fact that y'all was y'all was dunking on Summer Game Fest, not knowing that that's basically what E3 is now and will be. Facts. Hey, maybe y'all hey. maybe y'all not paying attention enough. Hey, you know what I'm saying? You may you may not remember the hashtag not my E3 shouts, but but Keely Fawns remembers. Keely Fawns yeah. remembers. I don't I don't know yeah. what y'all thought. Don't and don't don't let Summer Games Fest be good because I will go back and I will retweet them. I don't care. I think it will be super funny because uh, bro, I I I would lo- I would love it, bro. I need I need a, some type of tweet archiver or something because there's no way that many people deleted the tweets. I saw I saw hashtag now my E3 all over the place, bro. I saw it all over the place. Oh man, mm-hmm. we we need that run back, bro. I need that run back. I need names and I need hashtags, bro. I saw you. You're not slick. You're not slick, people. You're not slick, bro. Y- y'all are finicky. Y'all are finicky, bro. You just you need to step back and look at the bigger picture, bro. Mm-mm. Oh, that's funny. That's funny. Oh, shoot. We got... <laughs> I'm putting cases on all you bitches. <laughs> Facts, though. Oh, my goodness, man. All right, moving forward. As the corner has been turned on the Activision acquisition case... More eyes have been shifted towards Sony and the lobbying of the deal and not the eyes that Sony would like as the U.S. government is starting to pick up on Sony's alleged interference in the deal. Uh, Over the past few days, we had 11 members of Congress press Joe Biden to take action against Sony and look into their involvement in the deal and even more so the potential effects of Sony unfairly hurting Xbox in Japan, allegedly. Now, dang. (laughs) <laughs> this this turn this turn hostile real quick bro thoughts on this i mean like as you guys know i'm i'm team playstation for the for the vibes i definitely <laughs> I, it's it's literally it's so stupid um it's so funny that like people are like hey we need to get joe biden in on this like what I don't, man that man is gonna call them he's like listen we can't let nintendo mess up the green nintendo's uh <laughs> <laughs> profit margins or wait which nintendo's american made i'm dead uh, the green one yeah that that's the nintendo we need to we need to protect and we need to stop like to be honest with you this is this has been such a headache <laughs> and it's been so i honestly genuinely don't know which way this is gonna go and the fact that people are, the, the amount of people that are getting involved is one insane because i didn't even know this many people were like could even be involved in this but um, I do think that it would be cool for, I mean, like, but that's the thing is like, what can the U.S. government really do um, about this? You know, like what repercussions can they do to PlayStation? Like it just, I, I would love to see a deep dive on this. Yeah. I think that PlayStation definitely 
um, is try is playing a bit dirty, but I don't even see it as playing dirty. I see it as business. Like I think I think Microsoft has played dirty too. I think they all play dirty. Um, and I think I agree. the government should have been involved. If the government's getting involved now, they should have been involved way before any of this happened. Like they should have been involved a while ago. I also think um, if we're really going to be sitting here and being like, yo, Biden, you need to do something about about the, the Activision thing. I think Biden should do something about the other Activision thing. You know, the things that people mm. were doing and, and going and should be going to jail for. Mm. I think mm. like, why is it that we're asking for the president to get involved with the Activision deal and not the Activision fucking allegations? That's yeah. where, really where we should have been focused on. But now it's money thing. Hey, man. Y'all, y'all let y'all let Joe Joey Biden uh, <laughs> talk to them talk talk to them people at Sony, and they're gonna be like, "Hey, bro, um, what you gonna do on that side? <laughs> like, we don't like you know what I'm saying? Like, what, what are you gonna do to us? Like, it, imagine imagine if there was like uh, an embargo or a tariff on PlayStation. You know what PlayStation would do? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, what, what could he do? Be like, hey, PlayStation, you guys have to like pay some kind of tax. You know who they're gonna tax? The consumers. And you know who, who's gonna get who the consumers are gonna get mad at? The government, yeah, like, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, they're not going to be like, hey, no, you guys should never mess with Xbox. No, the PlayStation fans are going to be like, President Biden. You know, it's, it's, <laughs> it's a bit, it's, it's nuts. I don't even know. Like, at this point, man, just delete all the games. Don't, <laughs> don't release no Diablo. Don't release no Overwatch. Cancel it all, bro. That's crazy. <laughs> you want to gallery? Nah, nah, nah. Like, said, don't cancel my shit. No, no, no. Diablo <laughs> 4 just came out of beta. It was hot. No, whoa, whoa, whoa. Diablo 4 was fun, but at this point, man, if y'all can't make up y'all damn mind, it's like one of the, when your parents are like, if y'all can't play together, yeah, I'm, y'all no, not playing y'all at all. Playing, y'all not playing nothing. <laughs> y'all not playing a damn thing. <laughs> If y'all can't share the if y'all can't share the market, y'all can't have the market. <laughs> no lies, bro. No lies. Oh man. Nah, I don't need to say no more on that, bro. All I'm saying is, man, listen, that shit, that shit's hilarious. That's all I'm saying. This this whole is. thing is just it's been a funny moment after a funny moment. And I'm just like, yo, I'm eating my popcorn. This has honestly been a very, this has been one of the most entertaining things I've seen from the gaming space in terms of business moves and whatnot. So I'm, I'm enjoying my time. I'm enjoying my time. I'll just say that. 1000%. Yeah. All right. Moving on here. We finally got a new glimpse at the sandbox of everywhere via one of the games built within the world named Mind's Eye, which seems to be a heavy sci-fi action that stars the same actor uh, who portrayed Lincoln Clay in Mafia 3. It's also notable that Mind's Eye is coming from The Mind and support of former GTA lead Leslie Benzias. So uh, thoughts on Mind's Eye and some of the capability we saw in the teaser of everywhere. Um, Man, this looks... So here's the thing. This looks insane, but... Ah, man. Like all, like most things gaming, didn't Fortnite kind of already do this first? Mm. Like, and that's, and that's the, that's especially now that we're in this place of like, hey, we have made Fortnite Creative 2.0. And as much as I would love for people to be like, yo, let's just jump on Mind's Eye instead of Fortnite, it's gonna be tough, man, especially with the big, the big, big uh, head start that, Fortnite has on them right now like i could imagine a lot of people being like playing playing um everything or is that uh, that's the name of the game everywhere. right everything yeah they, they, the whole the whole platform is called everywhere it's basically yeah. it's basically like their Fortnite creative like okay everywhere yeah. and you can create whatever within everywhere you have to be you're gonna have to be real creative to like the the, the development team is gonna have to be real creative to get to pull people who are playing who are playing creative 2.0 right now and pull them to everywhere and i think that it's gonna be not only i i'm a fan of this because i believe that it will create competition in a space that virtually has none because we don't you don't really see a lot of like people trying to compete with fortnite creative at all so i think that this is going to be a really good thing for the the competition and it's going to push both companies to really try their best i just hope that they don't get blown out of the water before they're even given a chance to compete you know yeah no i hear i hear <laughs> This is this is crazy. I'll speak to that in a second, but just to speak on like again this in general. Like th th this looked really good. Like damn, yeah. I, I wasn't expecting much again from the first teaser we saw of everywhere. I saw like a racing game and like open environments, but I didn't think it was gonna be something to this depth. 
uh, that, that that could have been included in this. And I'm I'm very interested to see how the interface works with the tools and this, how what the pipeline is from opening the game or opening the platform to actually building something. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm interested yes. to see what that process is like because again, with with Fortnite, it's clearly delineated. It's clearly like you know mapped out. We know where to go from Fortnite to Fortnite Creative and all that jazz. But seeing everywhere. What does all of that look like? You know what I'm saying? How how, how are we going to get from point A to point B? And how are creators, you know what I'm saying, going to get in and make their projects and, and put it out in the world? Interested to see how that works out. So the sooner they map that out, the better it will be for their, you know, their push to the market. Um but the game actually looks really, really cool. Shout out to shout out to my boy who was linking Clay. You know what I'm saying? Uh I I'll I I'll, I'll, I'll rep whatever that man's in. You know what I'm saying? He is mm-hmm. solid, solid, solid man's. Um again, just action packed, look really, really good. Look, look damn good. Damn sharp. A lot of different just vehicle views and stuff. I saw like something about a drone. Just there was really good stuff in here. And then now it's just how do you how do you properly market this to capture people? This is this is just like their next step because it seems like they already have the capability within their system. Now it's just like, how do you best market this to show off how, what you can do and how either different or more expansive of the same thing it is than Fortnite Creator 2.0? Like, how can you show that off? Now that that's gonna be a tricky one because Fortnite already has a clout and they already have the immediate pipeline to Unreal Engine, so they, you're already fighting kind of like an uphill battle if you run into competition with them, so to speak. You know, what I'm saying I'm using air quotes, but. If you do run into that problem and people are likening you to Fortnite Creative 2.0, how are you going to create those differentiators and, st- and with what you do to, you know, kind of kind of show off your best traits and creating that space between you and Fortnite Creator? So it's a little bit of a, a, a sticky situation, I, I, I admit. But again, it looks really, really cool. And I was interested, I was interested in everywhere from when I first saw it. So uh, this this has only raised my interest level even more. So far, so good. They're, they're doing good with these teases, and I, 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 need, I need some more information. I need some more information. I need some real-life gameplay. I need, I, need, I need everything. I need I need everything, everywhere, all at once. No pause. I, 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 it's, it's time, bro. It's time to rock. So, uh, yeah, shout out to Mind's Eye. That was a solid, solid one. Okay. Oh, damn. I forgot I even had this on the notes. But uh, to kind of even just... Uh, fully uh, kind of put that nail in the coffin. The UK Content Markets Authority or the UK CMA have given their provisional approval of the Xbox Activision deal and that it will not hinder competition in the marketplace substantially with their investigation and inquiry left with just cloud gaming at the end of April. All that's left is the EU and the US to approve it and then the deal can finally go through. So thoughts on this decision which is pretty much a big turning point in in the whole conversation about this stuff and uh when, when do we expect this to fully be done man oh, man um i think that at this point the only the only way i could because i don't i don't agree with people saying that it's not a hindrance but i also it's just like it's a sticky situation because i don't agree that it won't affect the market i think that it will in a very significant way mm-hmm. but i also don't think that it's fair for Xbox not to acquire them because there hasn't really been a rule set for this and there needs to be some kind of like test, right? Because on one hand, you have people trying to like, um, on one hand, you have people trying to like acquire these companies and expand their, their, their gaming library. And then on the other hand, you have people like trying to make sure that there's no monopoly. I feel like there should be kind of like a, a, what's the word for it? Uh, like a test a test run of it mm-hmm. like let's see how it affects the market and y'all need to if y'all wanted to keep this and you guys agree that this won't affect the market that much we will let y'all own it but if we're seeing significant like monopolization and things like that happening we're shutting this whole thing down mm-hmm. because but at the same time like hey if y'all if y'all don't think that this is going to affect anything it is what it is you know like i can't i'm not the i'm not the expert on this um could there be some, you know, greasing of the palms? I'm not going to say there is or isn't, but, you know, I, I don't know how these things work. So I can't really say anything. Um, but, yeah, it sucks for sucks for PlayStation. That's really all that happens that I can say there. Yeah, yeah. Um, I really think the the six opinions of the companies that who were, you know, one of them were named, the five were unnamed. Whatever they were, I think those were, that was actually the nail in the coffin that really turned the turned the stone over for the UK CMA uh, and just how that was. And again, uh, I think this was Xbox's biggest hurdle because it, right, like the UK was kind of that middle ground where Sony still had a lot of strength and they had a lot of opposition. They were the biggest opposition 
that that was in terms of any regulatory body like brazil folded pretty quickly upon further investigation the u.s was pretty much there just wanted to check some things out here and there again like their investigations ending earlier than um uh the uk's uh the eu still has some doubts but overall the uk was still the biggest part of it it was the biggest obstacle and the fact that we have that now is just like you know, it's definitely a question of when, not if. You know, I feel like it was going to be the case pretty much beforehand, but this is definite confirmation. It's going to be, it's going to happen. But now it's just the when of when everything is going to get settled. You know, how long are people going to stall, all that good stuff like that. But it's definitely going through after this. But honestly, beyond this deal, and I've kind of forgot about it because we've all been kind of sucked into just the process and the drama of just the Activision deal. But when you think about it, We've been building to like an open season of of acquisition stuff over the past year or so. Like Take Two, Take Two Interactive had an acquisition of something I completely forget. Embracer Group started and acquired a bunch of different stuff. Like there's been a lot of of acquisitions. I think Rockstar and Take Two was it was something about Rockstar and Take Two who, who acquired somebody. It might have been I, I can't even remember. But yeah, Zynga got an acquisition or got acquired by somebody. There's been a bunch of like acquisitions that we thought oh shoot this is crazy you know what i'm saying and then somebody just kind of one ups and goes bigger oh this was crazy oh 1.2 billion this is insane oh like 70 billion this is really insane and i feel like after this deal goes through i don't know how crazy this is going to affect like you know into not in terms of competition but just in terms of buying into the market this might make things open season when you when you really think about it though when you really deep it it's like yo one of the biggest uh you know publishers of video games got acquired by another company who's to say all these ones are under it like uh, who are valued at a size under that company can't be acquired too i i can just see a lot of people chomping at the bit a lot of big companies who are on the outside in or even within the space looking across at other companies like yo we could probably acquire you and get bigger what's what's happening so i this this i don't i don't know how quickly it could happen but once this activision thing's thing goes through i feel like this is going to open the floodgates fully for a lot of different companies whether in the gaming space adjacent to the gaming space or outside of it completely to start looking inward and be like yo we can really buy in and and get a get a jump start and get on some competition like yo i wouldn't be surprised if somebody like a a big head like apple or meta does some wild stuff and, and and comes back in um i think i would hate for meta to do anything but i think actually wait before no, no, I would hate it. Um, I just have a very big bias against Meta, but that's neither here nor there. Um, I completely see what you're saying, though, and uh, it wouldn't be the first time. I think tech companies would definitely tap in. I think Meta has been in the not been in the gaming space, but they they are in the VR space, yeah. which is and saying they're adjacent. adjacent. Yeah, they're they're adjacent, but like they're not like they're not like a big publishing studio like a AAA. You know what I'm saying? AAA like FPS game type joint. Like they're not. They're not competing at the level of a Microsoft or a uh, or a Sony, you know what I'm saying, or, or Nintendo. Nobody's at that level yet, but people yep. could buy in to be in start to start kind of getting in the hunt and be be at some paces behind, but start to get in that conversation a little bit. You know what I mean? No, one one thousand percent. I think that it depending on my 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 bigger fear for it is more so like after if this goes through and Xbox acquires Activision, um, like is it? Is it over for Xbox acquisition season? You know what I'm saying? Because they were acquiring for the better yeah. part. I feel like this. The, the, past the two Activ- years. Yeah. And had they gotten Activision, would they have continued to keep buying? Because that's really their biggest hurdles. Is I feel like the, the reason they stopped acquiring so many things is because they are in a crazy legal battle right now. Mm-hmm. Um, so we'll see what happens. Uh, I am. I am more. Um, I'd be more happy to see people who aren't video game companies buying video game companies or acquiring or jumping into the into the the mix then i would be uh after all is said and done three months from now it being like uh xbox has just bought ea like oh, all yeah. right let, let's let's I slow our rolls here yeah, i wouldn't i wouldn't put it past i wouldn't put it past either sony or or, or xbox to go dip back in and start picking up companies left right and center i don't know i don't know how quickly things would happen but you know how ubisoft was kind of shaping up for sale they were pump faking sale like a couple of months ago and stuff we talked about it on, on the podcast i could see like that could be a play that could be a play for one of them and they're like oh yeah okay everybody everybody's up for grabs cool sony gonna bid some here on square enix bid here on ubisoft xbox gonna bid here on, on ubisoft and, and here somewhere else like yo like 
this I, I, that could be a reality. You know what I'm saying? After a big fish like Activision does go eventually go down, you know what I'm saying, and it ends up under an umbrella. This it it could really be hunting season for a lot of these big big companies. Yeah, and then and and if that happens, like. Oh man, yeah, that. I don't know. I, I, the Microsoft is winning the money race. That is for sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I could see that very clearly. Um, and I just hope that it doesn't come to a to a money fight situation. You know? Yeah, yeah. I was about to say we don't we don't really need that. Honestly, past past that point. But who knows what's gonna happen after this thing goes through? So we'll see. We shall see. All right, moving through here. We got the reveal trailer for Lego Drive. Uh, a new open world racing game with single player and multiplayer, customizable cars, co-op, and access on all current gen platforms plus PC. What did you make of this Lego Drive reveal trailer? Uh, this looks pretty sick, but I barely play Mario Kart as it is. Um, I think I think that it is a really cool game, and I'm sure there's going to be kids right now who are like gassed to play this. I'm sure that this is going to go nuts in the uh, the age range, like the middle school age, or like even before that, like between kindergarten and like middle school. I think that this would be is a really sick game. Um, and I'm happy to see more racing, like racing chill arcadey games, you know, like those are those are always fun. Um, back in the day, we used to have like Mario, Diddy Kong, even the Sims had a, a cart game like those games mm -hmm. are super sick. So I'm really happy to see Lego tapping in. And out of all people, I think Lego is probably one of the best people to tap in uh, to this space. I'm only here to say one thing. Lego Drive over Gran Turismo any day of the week. Yes, Thank actually. You. That is all. Uh, that is all. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> the, the seven Gran Turismo fans are going to be really pissed at us, but they'll be all right. Hey, man, listen. Y'all be all right. Go look, go, look at, go look at the dust spin up in the air as, as I'm transforming from land, air, to sea on my Lego cart, bruh. Take it easy. Go go take a hike. Wash your ass. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Push it forward. Forspoken is back around with some story DLC with the Intanta We Trust uh, expansion dropping on May 26th. It's going to be set 25 years before the uh, base game's events where Frey goes back in time to the, burge, the, the Purge of Reddig to battle alongside Tanta Sintra with the new range of abilities and environments to get into. Uh, thoughts on this, the new update, the support, what's happening with it? Um, I love the, 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 the support, and I think that this game... Um, it's not bad. I haven't played it yet because I just don't have the funds to pay for all these games. But I mean, I'm happy for the people who played it. I know everybody who I've talked to who's played the game has said that the game got a very bad rap uh, and un an unnecessarily bad rap. So I'm excited to see uh, this game continue to grow. I hope for the best. And I think that it is something that could be uh, really, really, I think it could be a really good game, to be honest. Um, mm -hmm. And I think I can't wait to see how this impacts the player base and hopefully people pick it up. Yeah, no, nah, I, I I agree, and it's also like, damn, it's, it's it's cool that they dropped it so quickly after you know, at least in a decent time range after the game first dropped. You know, what I'm saying that's cool that that they kind of were quick on the support, but it's also like, damn, Luminous isn't really a studio anymore. Like they got dissolved, yeah. so it's like, oh shoot, what the hell do we do now? You know, what I'm saying they're still supporting it, they're still dropping it, which is cool. So I don't know how it's gonna pan out post this DLC, but maybe they get this one and done, or maybe they have by have board store, but. Either way, it's solid, man. I, again, they 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 drop more content for the player base. You know, what I'm saying gives people a reason to come back and try it out. Like, uh, not 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 a bad deal, man. Not a bad deal. So shout out for Spoken for sticking in there and keeping it going. I had to yawn there. That's why there was silence. My bad. <laughs> no, you're good. You're good. <laughs> oh man. Oh jeez. We're in the middle of the week, people. We just bear with me. Bear with me. Bear with me. <laughs> oh man. All right. So we got some rumor buzz behind Resident Evil Four remake. Oh, a side note. After selling three million copies in damn near three days, by the way, hella ducats, cause it's like that. Uh, as some indication has been given that a separate ways DLC could be on the way in the not too distant future already loaded up. Of course, this would be the remake of the old separate ways, uh, you know, kind of packing experience, which puts you in the shoes of Ada Wong and her point of view. as She made her way through the village in Europe ahead of Leon during the events of Resident Evil 4. Uh, thoughts on all of this? Um, I think it's pretty sick. I've been watching gameplay here and there. I plan on playing um, this game myself, so I don't want to too much of it for myself but i have watched a little bit of gameplay in it i am actually really excited to jump into two and three so that i can play four mm. um 
these Resident Evil games look really polished, really good. And this is like an example of a DLC I'd be interested in. Usually, like, I'm not a huge fan of ex- of DLCs, but the the way Resident Evil handles um, reusing the world in a different way, in a different aspect, is very interesting. And it is definitely something that I am interested in seeing. Yeah. It's, it's dope. It's dope. You already know me. I'm I'm there. I'm there. You know what I'm saying? If Resident Evil 4 got 100,000 fans, I'm one of them. They got 100 fans, I'm one of them. They got one fan, that's me. I'm over here. Resident Evil 4, I'm with you. We, rock, we rocking with you. You know what I'm saying? You're doing a good job out there, my brother. You're doing a good job getting numbers like you are. And you got this DLC locked in the tuck like this? Beautiful. It's, it's, it, you love to see it. You love to see it. So, again, uh, dope. And again, like... Uh, I I I I watched I watched family members play separate ways and stuff and just pretty much most of the shit about Resident Evil 4 in my younger days before I got a chance to really get my hands on and play for myself. But again, dope stuff. At, again, a lot of the things actually make sense when you get that when you get that perspective of of of, of Ada Wong going through the story and 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 where her arc and you know where her arc is and how she crosses paths with Leon and stuff and during the events of Resident Evil 4. So that's that's a really dope kind of addition to to things and it's just it's beautiful it's beautiful what more do you want like come on man i this is this is the one game where i'll be like this is probably like one of like five games i'll be like listen give me whatever give me whatever you got and i'll take it like you know happily do whatever do whatever you want i i'll i'll I'll, I'll pay for it what's happening i'm putting my credit card down now in advance bro no 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 klarna no apple pay later this is getting done today that's all i'm saying bro shout out to resident evil 4 all right, all right. Pushing on here. The longtime emulator of GameCube and Wii games, Dolphin, is coming to Steam in early access this Q2 of 2023. This is actually insane timing considering the Wii U and 3DS just like closed their shop for good. Uh, but thoughts on Dolphin coming to official platforms in Q2 of this year? Uh I think that it's it's so funny because like back in the day emulation was like not even like seen but I know me as a me growing up I knew that like uh, it wasn't something that is really people are really excited about uh not many people are like oh man emulate like we're not excited like the the consumer is the uh, the government isn't so it's really interesting to see it on Steam I don't know if it's necessarily something that matters that much I feel like if you're somebody who's getting into emulation you kind of already know uh, you can already either have it or use it. I do think that for the people who don't know what emulation is, it is going to open up a door. But the question is, is like, will that door lead down a, a dangerous path for these people who don't really know the ins and outs of of emulation and things like that? And I also want to see like if uh, Nintendo has anything to say about this kind of thing, um, because we know this affects them the most. But of course, emulation is in a very gray area legally. And I hope that it, I hope that it stays that way. So we'll see, we'll see if this new added, like, because it's going to make, it's going to bring attention if this new attention is uh, going to impact emulation negatively or positively. Hey man, government schmoverment, allegedly. <laughs> uh, this is wonderful. Keep up the good work, though. <laughs> so when I get in my Steam Deck, you know what time it is, baby. I'm just saying, I'm, I'm locked in. You guys are doing a wonderful job and long may it continue. You know what I'm saying? Just hold tight. Just stay in there and keep dodging the punches from any regulatory bodies until I get my my Steam Deck, bro. Just hang in there. That's that's all. That's all the advice I have. But th- this is dope to see. For me, is is this dope? And uh, yeah, it's good stuff, bro. My Steam, the Steam Deck jumping, bro. The Steam Deck is actually insane when you think uh-huh. about how much power it got on it, and, and it has the whole Steam library backing. That's nasty. That that's a nasty combo. I'm with it. I'm with it. All right, uh, moving forward here. Paramount Studios have dropped the bombshell that a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles The Last Ronin game is now in the works at an unnamed studio that they deemed is the right partner. For those unfamiliar, The Last Ronin was a story uh, comic book line that uh, basically occurred in a world where there was only one surviving turtle left out of the squad as they made their way through a dystopian future world for revenge. The project got some comparisons to God of War, but we'll see how it plays out in time. Thoughts on all of this when? Uh, I think this is sick. I kind of, I like the last Ronin. Uh, I like the story of the last Ronin a lot. I low key kind of wish we got like a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game that wasn't this storyline. Not because I don't like it, but it's mostly just because I think that it's so new and I feel like 
Teen Mutant Ninja Turtles could use some love um, on different storylines. And it might be the new, the first experience for a lot of people. Um, like, I feel like we, the, the TMNT games are so far, few and far in between. Like, the, the major release, I'm talking like the AAA ones, not the newest um, uh, TMNT beat em up. So, like, I want, I would love for the other more upbeat stories to get a little bit of limelight, but I am very excited to play this. I think it's going to be really sick. Uh, and I'm, I'm probably going to, if it looks good, I will probably buy it because I'm a huge fan of the storyline. Facts. I ain't going to lie. I, I do have a penchant for buying Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles games. Except for that one I didn't have online. It didn't really work. I skipped over that one really quickly. Uh, this seems like a really, really, really good idea. And this could be something that, this could be a solid ass game. Again, like if, if people know like the general again just the general outlay of the last round like that's a really interesting narrative and again like oh one of the darker twists of a teenage mutant ninja turtle story that i i really do like honestly i really do like it's a, it's a dope story dope concept uh just like t- for me when i first heard about it like just the story in general i was like yo that's mad grim how you gonna do that? Mm-hmm. But I'm tapped in still. Like I'm here though. I'm here with it though, cause it, it it's just a wonderful take on uh, on just the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and it's like I would love to see that in a game format, God of War style. I would very 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 much like that. Again, I would like a little bit more uh, flexibility with the with the abilities and the movement style, because it's a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle. This mean this man need to be bouncing off the walls, doing double backflips, doing all this crazy stuff. He needs to be like OD. You know what I'm saying? The, 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 the flexibility needs to be there. Uh, the only question I have is who is the unnamed studio? Who could really bring to life that God of War type of, I guess, feel, but also be a little bit more, I guess, sensitive to the fact that it's a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle. They might have more like, you know, like uh, not necessarily animated, but more grandiose attacks and movement style and stuff because they're literal mutagen turtles like that that's a ninja like uh, who could be the right studio who is it i don't know um and god of war like not being made by santa monica is that's also that. a bit of a red yeah. flag for it's me intriguing intrigue i think like that's just a buzzword now like yo hey it's cinematic it's gonna be a, it's gonna be sad it's gonna be a single player in there it's gonna be like god of war y'all it's gonna be exactly like god of war you know what i'm saying wherever you got from god of war think about this like that, that that's a little bit unnerving to me but i feel like that's just pr buzz you know what i'm saying like there's there's one anything to compare it to in terms of like yo expect not, not necessarily expectation but hype absolutely yeah We'll see what happens. Uh, definitely going to keep my eyes on it. Um, I can't wait to, to see what happens. And hopefully the game, this isn't a game we look back on and be like, wow, that sucked. Please, please. My fingers are definitely crossed. And also, if I see EA's name anywhere near this, oh my gosh, I'm going to cry. I'm going to cry. Uh, I, yeah, I was going to say maybe. I'm going to fucking cry. Wait, say it one more time. I said, like, if it turns into, like, a Souls-like game. I said, if I see Respawn, maybe I wouldn't be too sad. But if it turns ah! into, like, a Souls-like game, I'd be pretty upset. I mean, you know what? Let me, let me, let me not, let me not, let me not hate on EA, actually. Because if it's Monolith, cool, because they did um Middle Earth stuff. But I don't know how punchy it would feel. Like, it would feel really quick. Like, it'd feel really quick. It'd feel really, like, you know, like, you have a lot of power under your belt. But punchy, like a God of War. Like, like the combos feel really, really good. Like, um, like how uh, Santa Monica does it. I don't know. I don't know. That's actually a tough question. Who could it be? I'm about to look into it, bro. I'm about to. I'm about to do some research, bro. It's got the answer's got to be out there somewhere in some capacity. I don't know. Not necessarily like who's revealed, but just what style would fit. Uh, and we'll see about it. We'll see about it. But shout out to this project. It sounds really good. For sure. Yeah. Okay. Nintendo, as they do popped out with a short uh, Zelda Direct with info on all things Link with news on the OLED switches and all that other good stuff that's easily pushed to the side for the main course of 10 minutes of Tears of the Kingdom gameplay showing off a lot of new features and actions including recall which rewinds the object paths of you know, whatever you grab or highlight in the, in the world, fuse which combines objects to build new weapons and gadgets, ultra hand to break objects apart and reattach them as needed and necessary, and a to fly up through ceilings at certain points uh thoughts on all the gameplay the abilities what you saw uh environments everything man what's what's going on with tears of the kingdom 
Um, this game looks sick. Uh, I know that a lot of people, well, actually, no, I know that some people are not happy with the direction that the Zelda games have been taken as of late. Um, but I think that it is a really interesting take on a franchise that has been around for such a long time. Um, every aspect of this game, I feel like this didn't go forward as much as it went left, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. I feel like they went from like, we see what we were good at. We like what we did. We're going to add things that are very different now, as opposed to trying to improve what we already have, we've already established, which I think is a really interesting way of doing it. Uh, I'm excited to play this game. This game actually looks pretty interesting. I played Breath of the Wild and I'm playing it now. I haven't beat it fully. I have re recently restarted my save and I'm having fun, but there are times where I'm just like, where it, it's not, there's nothing bad to say about the game, really. Like I am enjoying what for it, I'm enjoying it for what it is, but this new one looks like it's going to like open your mind up more. It's looking like it's going to be more of a sandbox than uh your typical action adventure game and i'm really excited about that because that's one of my favorite things about survival games um i love running around in survival games and doing and like what what's in this game is exactly what i why i like survival games just being able to craft being able to create it kind of really just upped the the player's creativity and i think that that's really a really good uh path for them hey i'm afraid of heist bro I ain't gonna lie, I'm afraid of heist. This 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 verticality shit is kind of crazy to me. I'm sorry. Let's let's let's, let's be really <laughs> like I, just to speak on first and foremost the environments, bro. Holy hell! The way again, even though it's a switch, this is going to be ran on a switch. The environments look ridiculous, bro. Like, do you see how everything's set up? Like, this is a big step this is a really big step up in terms of the outlay of environments. How again, just. Uh, pure word verticality that's insane bro took the recall like the the lift all the way up in the air and there's like a bunch of islands all scattered out there and stuff like this is, looks like a really significant expansion of what we saw from breath of the wild which again hats off to you because that's no easy feat of expanding upon the world of breath of the wild that's that i think at least in the switch hardware and stuff like that and even by their standards it's hard to do how do you think of okay what do we do next what do we really like you know make feel significant but also really expand on it stuff at, at, at mass so they did that and again all the tools and stuff look really really cool being able to combine objects now and not really you know durability is still there but having the ability to combine objects and all stuff like that is really really cool i don't know if you saw this one part though but like he got like link got knocked off the side of like the, the mountain or whatever island he, sky island he was on right and he fell all the way down all the way down to the water and i'm just like you know what and it didn't really shudder in frames and nothing like that like it 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 looks good it, a lot of the mechanics and stuff looks insane. I'm, I can't wait to see what what type of myth buster, wild ass, you know what I'm saying, nut ass contraptions you people build online. Like, it's going to be a fun time seeing all the different inventions you guys make to, to roll around. Like, you guys going to build monster trucks and everything like that. And I'm going to be in awe as I, you know, struggle to even figure out how to put two boulders together. But it's going to be a fun time. It looks insane. And, dog, like, pfft, yeah. I, yeah. I, I, Negus, Negus was smart to pick this on the draft. <laughs> No, yeah, it looks it looks really good. However, I will say this: um, even though it looked really good in the controlled environment of a video, um, yeah. I don't think that it will perform as well as we saw. Um, I'm playing Breath of the Wild now on my Switch, and I do have a base Switch. My Switch isn't old, but Breath of the Wild, which is a game that came out at launch, mm -hmm. in and of itself, is not. Uh, it stutters. It's it stutters. So it's one of those things where it's like. I'm not going to hold my breath on the performance because I don't think that's what I'm here for. It's going to be similar to Pokemon. If you're here for a good performance and a smooth experience, I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> it might not be a good idea. But what I will say is that it will be a good, a good Legend of Zelda game. I'm excited for it. I will play it. Um, and if you want to wait to see if it performs well, I think that that's a smart call because I can't imagine a game this a game like this not having any graphical and not, not having any performance issues when I myself have performance issues on my switch for a game that came out years ago. Nah, here, hold your breath. I see what you did there. See what you did there. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> but yeah, no, nah, I, I mean, again, even aside from that, looks, looks really good. Uh, I'm I'm I'll probably I'm, I'm probably gonna be there. I'm probably gonna be there buying this as close as close as I possibly can. I'll probably need to speed through Breath of the Wild first, but you know it is what it is. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out, guys. We'll figure it out. Uh, moving on to the next topic. So kick kick.com, the streaming platform, has been growing stronger and stronger by the day. 
And they are snowballing to some bigger pulls as they have confirmed that chess grandmaster Hikaru Nakamura is now going to the kick platform. And Jake Lucky also reported that Hikaru was one of six incoming signings that kick is poaching for their site so again over the past few weeks kick has been you know pretty much on a roll they've been getting a lot of different traction a lot of people have been moving over there and just seeing what's up getting curious how do you feel about kick and its viability in the market when um i really kind of want it to 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 grow i recently streamed over there uh well restreamed over there um on monday and it seemed okay like the user interface is very similar to twitch it's just it's just un basically another twitch i don't the the issue I have with like the the main question is like when will Twitch take this serious? You know, um, because mm. at the end of the day, uh, they didn't even take YouTube serious. I feel when YouTube was taking a lot of their streamers, and I don't know if they will take this serious. Um, it's sad to see such a big because the thing is I I I not I don't watch the I don't care that much about chess. I care, I feel like I care more than the average person about chess. But yeah. I know I've seen that man on the front page damn near every day. Mm -hmm. So to me, it's like, wow, you guys lost him. Who are like, who's next? Do I see an XQC making a signing? I don't think so. But I don't know. It's kind of wild because even if even if Kick doesn't make it, even if Kick pulls a mixer, at the end of the day, Ninja was on that platform for a long time. And they did lose viewership on Twitch for that. So we'll see what happens. Um, I, if Twitch needs to be worried, that's that's the the best. I guess Twitch needs to to start thinking about um, ways of retaining their their people, and it might come down to paying people more because that seems like the biggest reason a lot of people are choosing Kick is just the payment and being able to afford things. Really, yeah, yeah. Listen, competition in the market will always be good. That is something I will always raise my hand up and say, yes, I like that because it's going to force people to step their game up and actually be better in the in the marketplace. So that's something I'm always going to be for. So that's, that's something I'm always going to be a proponent of, uh, you know, in whatever, especially in the content space, because there's too many people that feel like 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 twitch is this golden platform that's never going to get out of style that you know it's is a golden child it's 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 defendable in every situation people have to realize that at at the end of the day twitch is a service like everything else is a service so whenever uh, something that provides better service comes along you probably don't be don't 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 deny it and don't don't shoot it down immediately because you're you're another bag could be on there another a better way for you could be on there and so you never know what's happening you know what i'm saying like you know you never know what's happening if you don't try so i'm glad that that's coming in and again i agree with you the question does come back when does twitch start to really get in gear with the changes that they're making and how they need to get on top of stuff because their market advantage is dwindling steadily and uh i would i wouldn't i wouldn't say quickly but slowly but surely people are catching up youtube is catching up you know what i'm saying kick just came out of the out of the woodworks like a few months ago and now they burst onto the scene like stuff is moving faster and faster and i feel like twitch is still in this part where they're like they're not they're not aware of their surroundings in terms of the competition and it's going to start to really catch up on them again we saw it for the first time the other day this is the first time we've seen that twitch's like revenue earnings were not at the level that they expected them to be they're getting that slowdown i don't know if it's going to continue but you know whether whether either or whatever the case is they need to find ways to get back and get competitive to really make changes not just a random analytics hub what people were actually looking for implement the change that they actually talked about and get moving because platforms like kick they're on the up platforms like youtube they're only getting smarter and stronger so it's like what are you trying to do you know what i'm saying are you going to stand still and let everybody pass you by and become like you know just just an afterthought in the streaming space or are you actually gonna figure out what's going on and, and not rest on your laurels so we'll see in time but you know kick so far so good it's viable and it, it's it and the larger it gets the more regulation it will get whether that be positive or negative uh there's going to be some positives in terms of regular and regulating you know the safety of it and you know the efficacy of the actual platform which is good but then who knows what the price changes will be like and stuff there's going to be a lot of stuff that happens to kick as it rises but again more competition is good so we'll, we'll see what happens Okay, another rumor sprouting up here, y'all, but had some internal informants and snitches calling out 
that we could possibly see Ubisoft Plus coming to the Xbox Game Pass very soon. Thoughts on this one? Um, I can't wait to play. Um, <laughs> <laughs> nah, 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 that's crazy. Oh, wait, I can't wait to play Splinter Cell. Yeah, that'd be sick. Hey, um, hey get the new, yeah, yeah, get that, get that. Yeah, new, that, that, new ones, that would old pretty, ones, all them. Put them on. Yeah, that, that probably, that's pretty much kind of it. Like every, every, Ubi, the thing about Ubisoft is that they have a, a big library of games, but I, me personally, I don't really tap into many of them. I've never been like, I need to play. Like when I saw Assassin's Creed Valhalla, I had no intention of playing that. And I heard good things, but I was just like, nah. Um, more games on Game Pass is cool. Uh, but that's not really helping them in this fight to get Activision. So uh, I don't know if we will see this anytime soon because I feel like making this move right now would be yeah, it's too hot. Stupid. The block is hot. The block is hot. You chill out. Chill out. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Ubisoft was like, yo, we need some money, bro. Get us in there right now, right now. They're like, shh. No. Bro, do you not see us outside trying to fight? Like yo, my family's here, bro. Relax. We on red alert, bro. Don't come outside. Do not come in the house yet. Just wait. Stay on the back porch and wait till the signal's clear. Then you can rock inside. Like, but otherwise, do not say nothing. Do not do nothing. Hold on, Ubisoft. Relax. But yeah, again, if if it is true, solid. That's another win for Xbox Game Pass. Ubisoft gets some clout. You know, it is what it is. But again, it's just about timing for Xbox Game Pass now because once they get Activision over the line, it's like, all right, cool. Now it's now again. Now it's open season for them. But I I I'd say, I'd say I'd say listen more incentive for me to keep my game pass like what do you what more do i want listen man the the the, the congregation is expanding that's all i gotta say baby that's all i got mm -hmm. oh shoot okay this is something that we saw uh earlier in the week here a, a rumor but pretty interesting rumor comes where a fairly uh i'd say a, a a fairly you know what i'm saying decent source when it comes to information on fifa and uh one second here got a yard <sighs> Oh my gosh. Oh. Oh my goodness. I just thought about E3. It was killing me for a second. My bad. Uh <laughs> we had a pretty interesting story uh here surrounding EA Sports FC. EA's newly branded but next iteration in the football series and something called Dynamic Packs. Now basically they're uh, the rumor is they're adding a feature in their ultimate team mode where they have packs and Dynamic Packs would be a new system that will basically increase the chance of you getting a high rated card the more packs you open which will be displayed in percentages before you open them and will increase after a certain number of packs that you get through and then it'll reset if you get one and all that you know this that and the third kind of resembling certain type of gotcha tactics and systems and whatnot so uh when, when how, how you feel about this man um how do i feel about gambling um not a big fan of it myself but um i think that this is i first i think fifa ultimate team in general is just dangerous i think all the my like the uh, wwe my factions i haven't even touched that because i i just don't um what's the word for it want to lose all my money yeah <laughs> so i think that this is like i think the percentage isn't a bad i don't think that th that is the worst thing that's going on here i don't think that that is absolutely like oh no can't have can't have people seeing that because at the end of the day i would like to know what am i if i'm if i am in indulging this i would like to know if i'm about to get this or not um this the only thing that i could i can kind of equate this to is like when i played diablo 3 they would tell you like, or not a Diablo, but I remember like my friend told me about how um, Lost Ark works. And when you're like leveling up certain gears, uh, it will tell you like the fail rate. But the more you fail, the higher the chances of you succeeding are. I think that that's fair. It really just depends on how often uh, you're you're going to have to fail to to get the thing that you want. And it's it's not good. Like, I don't think that the packs are a good way of getting things in general. Um, but I also don't think it's a bad thing, but I know that it's like, it's like a, it's like a good thing in an entirely horrible system. Like that's like, the, the, like seeing the percentage I think is good because it lets you know, like, okay, at least I'm working towards something as opposed to getting screwed over every single time. But I also see how dangerous it is. And I also think that the entirety of the, the, the model should be thrown away. Mm. Now, as, as much as I was louding, they're you know what I'm saying and applauding EA for breaking ties with FIFA. I forgot that EA were EA, so they're gonna try yeah. to pull some bullshit like this sometimes. 
I got carried away, man. I saw a big fish, and I forgot that the other one was also a fish. So, you know what I'm saying? It gets mixed up from time to time. Pardon me. Pardon me. But, yeah, this is insane. This is actually kind of crazy. Packs are already as bad as it is now. They've already added some pack weights beyond 100K or 2,000 FIFA points or 1999, and then they've gone to, like, 175, 200K packs, 500K packs. They've done some crazy stuff over this last year alone with the promos and all that stuff. They have so many promos that they introduce every month, and it's like, bro, you can bankrupt somebody off that. And I'm just thinking all the, like, impressionable people that play FIFA, you know what I'm saying, who see their favorite creators, who have their pack weights adjusted and all the celebrities to get all the great cards because their pack weights are adjusted or they get free cards. And like, oh, what about this for me? And they keep keep chasing that percentage in this dynamic pack system and they just have all this money go down the drain or if they didn't grind for the coins themselves all that fifa all the fifa points go down the drain that they bought and it's like damn bro i don't want to see that happen to you again this is again just this is it's it's it's, it's low-key predatory bro i mean what what a foot what, what half a foot is at this point but like this is, I think, something that's kind of unnecessary given the amount of promo and stuff that FIFA already does. But they're going to try and make their money somehow, bro. They're like, I, I, they're saving a bunch of money by breaking up with FIFA. I'm, I don't know how much money, more money they need. I don't know how many sponsorships there are, licenses they're trying to buy. So for me, it's, it's an L for me. But, you know, knowing FIFA, it, one good change will probably come with six questionable changes at the same time. So we're going to mm -hmm. have to see how it plays out in the summer when they do the full reveal of EA Sports FC. Just, just bring online career mode. That's all I'm asking. That's all, that's all I care about, bro. I could give a less of a damn about foot. I, I'm, I'm gonna be real. I'll play foot. I'll, I'll dabble in it. I'll do what I do because I played FIFA for so long. But I just want other stuff outside of that, bro. I just want to. I just want to get on, play career mode, get on like career mode, and play pro clubs with my peoples. That's really about it at this stage. Yeah, it's it's really interesting. And one thing that I do think that'll be interesting is uh to see how transparent uh FIFA will be. Like seeing like wow, it says here that I have a ninety eight percent chance of getting whatever. Let's see what I get. Oh, nothing. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, if people or, or they're going to be like, wow, your percentages went up by 0.5%. Like, people are going to actually be like, whoa, I'm getting screwed here. Like, I'm, I'm looking at this, and this is, like, not fair. Yeah. Um, I think due to government regulations, they're, they're going to have to be. And I think they did over this past, I can't, remember if it was, if, I can't remember if it was a year ago or two years ago, they started to put some of the pack weight percentages in certain things. I can't remember even if they did or they started to like change a certain, I can't remember what they did exactly, but I know the government forced them to make a change in how they displayed pack weights and stuff at, at some point. But I don't know how obvious it's going to be with the dynamic pack rating, the system. I don't know if they're going to try and subvert it with a new feature, quote unquote, but eh, we'll find out, man. EA's always got some up their sleeve. So we'll see what, what, what happens in the summertime when they reveal it. Yeah. Yeah. All right, man. This this has been like the rumor mill episode. Good goodness gracious, man. So many rumors that popped up and sprouted. Um, we have another one that has popped up more and more recently uh, over the past few episodes and weeks and stuff. And something I know when's very uh, keen about uh, Metal Gear Solid Three remake. We've heard a lot of uh, more buzz over this week that it will be coming in 2024 with some other konami titles planned to be revealed around e3 season so how are you feeling about this man um if by remake they mean uh they mean a port i'm all for it if they mean updated graphics and it's the same game just looks better i'm all for it if it's like we're build rebuilding this from the ground up not excited whatsoever I mean, um, you you don't want the Resident Evil treatment. You don't want the you don't want the the bang bang. Some of the, some some adjustments in story. You don't want that. That is that is Capcom. That is not Konami. Um, I don't trust Konami to tie my <laughs> shoes for me. I could be wearing <laughs> slip-ons and I wouldn't trust them to tie my shoes for me. Um, I don't think that it'll be what we would want. Um, from I don't I I, I man I don't know what they're gonna do with that. I don't want them to do anything with it. We will see what happens. I'm not holding my breath. If I would love to play uh, like Metal Gear Solid 3 on PC, do not get me wrong. That game is so good. It's not even funny. It's probably it's my favorite game of all time. But I don't trust Konami at all. Hey. Like at all. So we will see what, what happens. But I'm not holding my breath. Hey, if young Wenneth don't trust you, I'm going to shoot you, bro. You know what time it is, man. 
That's all I'm saying. I I I don't know. Did we bet a dollar on this or something else? I think it was something else. Um, I can't. I don't keep track of my dollar I, bets. It was. I think. Damn, I do. I'm. I'm sorry. I'm. I'm cheap. I'm sorry. Oh, <laughs> uh, I think it was the Naughty Dog thing. I don't think it was this, but I tried to bet you on this. You were like, Nah, nigga, nah, it's not coming out. It's not coming out. Oh, uh, I, I, I don't think we bet a dollar on this one. I think it was the Naughty Dog one, where it's like, What game are they doing next? And I was like, It's not going to be a certain thing. I can't remember if it was. I, I can't remember exactly what it was, but yeah, whatever. That's that's something for another time. But yeah, Metal Gear Solid Three. I'm interested to see what happens because. Uh, I, I haven't I haven't fully dipped into Metal Gear Solid. It's something I have to do on my own time and have like a pilgrimage. That's like I I almost in my head equate uh it, I, I in my head I equate like half of half of the One Piece journey to Metal Gear Solid because I feel like there's a lot with understanding it and fully immersing yourself in it if you didn't catch it at a certain time or get into it from earlier. And it's like okay, it's gonna be a commitment to really understand everything about metal gear solid all the ins and outs like i know a few things here and there like i've seen a, i've seen stuff over my years of playing like over over my years of watching people play it and you know watching videos and stuff and knowing more about you know kojima and all that stuff so getting to that point is gonna be a pilgrimage but i'm just in, i'm just, all I'm, I'm all i'm here for is one's reaction bro if it's an actual full full scale remake with like 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 Capcom style remake where it's like you know the Resident Evil type things of late where it's like yo they're doing like some re reskins you know what I'm saying revamps story's gonna be slightly different they're gonna adjust some things the level of 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 vitriol that I'm looking to see from when is going to be historic but if it isn't it's just reskin that's one for everybody else still because MGS three is again a classic so I, I'm just interested to see how it comes out E three is gonna be yeah. interesting it's like it's like when your one friend who has been notorious for messing up tells you like yo i finally i'm finally turning my life around and you're like man i don't believe you uh you haven't really showed me any reason to believe you but you're like i i hope for the best like i'm going to hope for the best but i'm also like if he says hey let me borrow 60 dollars, i will not be giving it to konami <laughs> until I, until i can I, i'd rather give it to like his his PO officer before I give it to Konami. Like I'm I'm like yo yo I need sixty dollars for my water bill. Like I'm I'm gonna go to the water bill company with you, buddy. Like I'm That's I'm gonna take you there. Let's go let's go to the I, register together. <laughs> let's go. To, I'm gonna I'm gonna write a check to the water company. Like I do not <laughs> trust you. Ah, uh, no, nah, that's too funny, man. That's too funny. All right, all right, we go push ahead real quick under the trailer trove. Uh, quick section where we watch war. We talk about more watchable media and stuff like that. Um. One quick story in this. Ahead of the Star Wars celebration in April, some word is sparking up that three new Star Wars movies are rumored to be announced, including a project that involves Peaky Blinders creator Stephen Knight writing and Charmed Ob Obey Chinoy, uh, who directed the Miss Marvel show, to direct this uh, a certain project out of those three. So thoughts on Star Wars celebration and three more Star Wars movies coming to fruition potentially? Um, I think it's cool. Um, I think I can't remember who I told this to, but like I am I am a fan of Star Wars. I'm a huge Star Wars fan, but I haven't really tapped into the Star Wars, uh, the Star Wars franchise since episode nine. Um, and it's kind of sad, but at the same time, it's just like I like saving. I, I just don't feel like the the franchise was in a good place for me to tap back into it. I did watch I did watch Mandalorian season one. I will say that. Nice. I did watch. I did watch Mandalorian season one. I didn't watch two because I ran out of Disney Plus, and like I said before, um, I don't have. Um, I didn't want to spend money on it when I didn't know if it was gonna be if they even had a future. So yeah, I I am excited to hear about new Star Wars things and revitalizing the franchise. I know that they're working really hard over there on that side. Um, Will they will they hook me back in? We will see. We will see. Cause I'm it's not that I'm I have nothing against uh nothing, nothing at all against uh Star Wars, but uh if it if it came down to if if these movies aren't hitting for, then I'm gonna keep being a dormant fan. Yeah. Um now I will say this ever since episode nine, overall. Star Wars has been cooking with crack. You know what I'm saying? They've been doing some good stuff. I need to tap back in with Mando season three. That's going on right now. Been letting some episodes load up, but I, I people argue over they want. I thought Obi Wan was was really good. I liked Obi Wan a lot, and I I needed that in my life. 
uh bad bad batch when it came when it came back through uh book of boba fett solid like there was this there's been solid stuff they've had a good patch so far ever since episode nine in terms of the shows and all that stuff like that but stepping back into the movie arena uh i'm concerned i'm gonna be honest <laughs> What the hell are we going to do? What stories are we going to, you know, go after? What are we going to actually talk about? Is it like is it the next saga after episode 9? Because that's going to be a tough, you know, thing to do. Are you going to try and retcon anything or are you just going to go a completely different arc? Are you going to go into the prequels? Are you going to go into like like the prequel prequels like the like the High Republic era? Like are you going to do something completely different? This is this is a very pivotal time for Star Wars in the in the main on the big screen and I feel like that's going to, you know, it's gonna eventually take the lead as as the bigger Star Wars prize that everybody sees because everybody's you know used to them being in the big screen. And I I will be real, I would not be mad if they went back in time to the High Republic era. If they gave us like you know if they kind of did some congruence with some of the video game stuff that's in development, and they gave us like a, a um a uh, Knights of the Old Republic type joint. You know what I'm saying? If they gave us something around that era. You know what I mean? Like a mm -hmm. like like a like a Darth Revan story or some shit like that. Like yo, if they gave us something in another time frame, completely different time frame in the past, I would not mind that whatsoever because there's so much history and so much lore in in you know in Star Wars that's explored and unexplored in different time frames, whatever you see in the Skywalker saga or not, that they can have a good time. They can make really good stuff outside of it. So just continuing chronologically right after the events of episode nine, I mean cool. But unless you set it up very, very well and somehow retcon Finn into being an actual Jedi and fix that wrong that has never been righted by Disney, I don't I don't know the sense in actually making something so close to that time frame of the events of episode nine. I don't really know about it. But if you're going back in time to something like again, like the old Republic, High Republic era type stuff, I'm all for it. But, you know, who knows? At this point, who knows? This is a really toss-up time for, for um, Star Wars stuff. I'm cautious, but very intrigued at what they're going to drop next. So we'll see what happens in April with their stuff, man. But I, I would say I'm not the most optimistic, you know what I'm saying, right now. I'm watching with keen side eyes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. All right, on to our main story for the evening multiverses guys multiverses has been making headlines all up and down the internet this week as they plan to close the game out of open beta in june as they prep for a full launch in early 2024 with many people worried the faqs of the site have indicated that all the items in progress will carry over when the game relaunches but they are taking the lessons they learned from this period and hopefully put it into the next on full launch next year so thoughts on this um, I mean, you already know. Very big fan of multiverses. Um, have been for a while. I thought at when it first dropped, I was like, man, this game right here, it might be the Smash Bros. killer. Like, I genuinely believe that. But as we see, Smash Bros. very live, multiverses very much going offline. Um, there's a lot that could be said about the, the launch about multi multiverses. I was actually watching a YouTube video on this exact topic uh, today. Um, it's funny because we were meant to record yesterday and I'm happy that we didn't because I was able to watch this video and it get broken down by uh, Fighting Game Jesus Maximilian dude. Shout out, and, shout outs. Like big shout outs. And the way they broke it down was like, they said that they have talked to people on, inside the um, inside the, the industry, right? Mm -hmm. And there has been uh, instances where a game's popularity being this high has actually negatively affected it. Um, and it's something that I, you don't really think about often. Um, people were saying, you know, like, the game came out, it had a lot of buzz, and, like, I'm not going to lie, a lot of people were kind of hating on it for it. Yeah. Um, they were, and I'll they had deep. right to... Yeah, like they had right to be upset or, or to, to be like, this game isn't fully done. 1,000% um, because it was in beta. And it kind of, like, was... One thing that multiverses communicated well when it came to like updates on the game and things like that. But one thing that they did not communicate well was the actual state of the game. They didn't really communicate well. Um, if this was open beta, how far into the game development process this was, because 
like we would assume that they released and the game was essentially ready to go. Like the way the way they kept the beta open, you would think that this is this game is essentially going to be done within mm -hmm. a couple months. Yeah. Um, and the fact that they're closing down and not releasing until 2024 shows how far behind they were in the development process. And it is something that like a lot of people don't really um, realize is that this game was so far behind uh, in development that like it's just it's impossible for them to continue to make this game to continue to 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 make this game um, and continue the 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 momentum they had when we got like Black Adam and we had like all the people coming out like we had um, the Gremlins and all that. Like it was impossible for them to mm. keep doing that on top of trying to create a game that people want to play. Um, like trying to, to to develop a game and keep it live service. Like you can't do both. Mm -hmm. And it's something that they learned the hard way. The team is not big at all. Um, yeah. This isn't this isn't like uh, something like Nintendo. Yeah. This, this ain't, isn't this ain't Call company. of Duty. This ain't Call of Duty running this stuff. This is a brand new studio. Brand yeah, new studio. Brand new studio brand new studio brand like brand spanking new people and even though like i see a lot of comparisons to like well what if like well these people had like a lot of money people were buying things for it's like yes but money like when you really think about the process in general like in in, in total if you give me a hundred million dollars tomorrow um i'm not going to significantly change my night my life overnight mm -hmm. like things have to get done before that so when you when people make the argument like well they had all this money well, why didn't they like hire more people? The hiring process for any company is takes months at a time. And even if they were able to streamline the hiring process, you still got to bring in new people, teach them all the systems, teach them how to make things for this game. Like it's just going to take a lot of time. Not only that, they're working under Warner Brothers. Mm -hmm. Warner Brothers was deleting things left and right. Like there was so much going <laughs> on at that company that like, you didn't. Even, they they probably didn't even know what they could do in certain aspects because they don't even know what they going would exist. on. In, yeah, exactly. Like it's just it's just not to to assume that they could do something like go up against um, Nintendo, which I thought like, and I was ignorant. I thought like, oh, this is this is gonna cook. Like they just can't do it right now. Um, my biggest upset about the whole thing i'm actually really happy that they're, they're going offline to make the game better i don't think that this is a bad call whatsoever my biggest upset is the fact that like people did spend money on the game and there is no refund process as of right now that i'm aware of for people to get that money back because if you're somebody who played the game liked it but you're like eh whatever i'm gonna just keep waiting for like like me i stopped playing it because Man. i was like i'm gonna just let, i'm gonna let the concepts i'm gonna let the content stack up i'm gonna let the people keep doing their thing before i like really genuinely start like tapping back into it uh -huh. um and i didn't get that mind you am i upset not really like i a 60 uh right as of right now doesn't hurt me um i'm pretty pretty fine financially so like oh no i don't get my 60 dollars back but it's also like for the people who who it did hurt or the people who even played this game consistently who are still playing this game like that sucks for them because they're there goes their money you know yeah <sighs> Uh, it, it's, it's weird, honestly, because again, it does suck that a game is being taken away to kind of, you know, just reassess and re, re, reshape how they're doing things. And again, it kind of ended off on a sour note because they lost a lot of their player base and there was people talking shit on the game, like it's going to die and all stuff like that. And so it's tough to kind of hear that and and you know people's experiences weren't as uh i guess consistent across a, a game coming out the, the gate swinging that that hard and you know having that much success only i guess it's only gonna try and you know it has to be continued perfection or it's gonna go downhill a little bit you know in terms of just player reception just people staying on and retention on stuff like that because new things happen new things come out but is it weird to me that this is one of the few times where companies actually did what they were supposed to do in a beta situation? Is am I am I the only one wrong with that? Like, am I alone in that thought? Because I feel no, like, I, go ahead. No, I was gonna say like that's you're you're not wrong at all, and I think you mean you. I I agree with you. I think that it's definitely one of those situations where like I think they did the right thing of pulling it. Yeah. Um, but it's just like. Not many people can think critically. Mm -hmm. um, oh yeah, and like I don't, I hate, I hate sounding like y'all are dumb, but y'all are dumb. Like, <laughs> so some of y'all are actually dumb. though. I can't even front. Like, uh, 
it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense to, for them to continue. Like you guys are saying, like, oh, no content, no content, no content. And they're like, all right, we need time for the content. Let's mm -hmm. let's slow it down. Then you can't be mad at them when they slow it down. Like yep. that's they yep. did what you wanted, but you can't you can't have your cake and eat it too. Mm -hmm. um, I, I in any case in any situation that they that they were gonna slice it, player first games and multiverses was gonna get some type of burn or some type of shit from this. If they yep. stayed on and they kept pushing, they were most likely going to die as a service, completely die out, and they weren't going to have enough time to fully devote themselves to you know making changes, being as proactive as they were in the beginning of the cycle, updating things like bringing in ranked and new features. They were going to run out of steam really, really quickly as a developer, as a, an experience, and they were probably going to die out as a game. Or they could do what they actually did and say, "Hey, listen, we're we're, we're at this point where we're gonna start, we're gonna pull the game. We're gonna take all the services away and stuff like that. By coming in like June, we're gonna stop. We're gonna reassess. We've 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 taken a lot of lessons from this. We're gonna you know come back stronger next year. Now, again, people are gonna be pissed because there's that money situation that's involved because people did invest some gleamium and all that stuff like that into it, which does suck. And it, 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 at least they're doing the bare minimum of saying, "Hey, listen, when when we come back, you guys will have all your stuff there." Which is it's already a plan in place to at least give some continuity to people who's coming back to the game when they re-release, which is good. But they made the right choice. They made the right yeah. choice. How many times have you seen a game go into open beta, early access, and never close and never come out, and because they, they just keep getting money, 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 and they never they barely update the game. Like, how many years has Star Citizen been in like development, bro? I, I hate to use them as an example because I actually like Star Citizen, but it's like how many years have they been in like early access or beta? I've never heard an official version come for that thing yet. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, it, it's and again, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments if they have an official version at this point, because I'm just I've just lo I've been lost for years. You know what I mean? I've been I've been lost on that on that front for years. But actually saying, hey, this listen, this is open beta period. You know what I'm saying? We know what we know what what we saw. We know what we collected. We know the data. We know, uh, you know what I'm saying what what worked, what didn't how we felt as a as a developer developing unit how you guys felt as a fan base towards these things what you might have wanted to see what didn't happen all those lessons trials and tribulations they took that and closed down the beta and gave themselves enough grace and time to fully develop what their actual final vision is for the start of their actual game this is this is what a beta is meant to be it's meant to be a strong test and i feel like again for a new studio like that i i think they needed that extended period of time to figure out okay how do we manage content how do we manage updates how do we manage the community how do we manage actual internal you know improvements how do we how do we manage our team there's so much that they had to learn in a in a quick quick span of time from their from their inception to figure things out and make things happen. And again, the success came as it did. Like they had like 150K, like some of the highest player counts as for a fighting game on Steam ever. And, you know, you had to work through all of that. And then, and then, you know, when the demands from consumers come in, that just again crunches and compiles everything you have to do, makes it that much more pressurized. So I they did they did the right thing. I, I think last week or two weeks ago, we likened the situation on multiverses to Halo Infinite. And if they kept going down this path, they were going to be Halo Infinite multiplayer. Halo Infinite dropped their beta early. They 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 saw all this great fan reception and stuff and kept their stuff out without the backup plan of actually having content and didn't release. They did release months early for their multiplayer stuff and they didn't have any content to back it up. And then that stunted their entire development process for every other vertical as time went on for campaign, for multiplayer, all that stuff for Forge. All that stuff got stunted because, oh, they saw this this stuff early, but then, oh, okay, cool. The players were like, oh, that's great. What's next? And then they didn't have anything. And as the weeks went on, they tried to they tried to hurry up and release stuff, but it only got worse. And then people just lost faith and left. Multiverses avoided that fate. Multiverses avoided that outcome by closing down the beta and reassessing and coming out stronger. And that was the best decision that they possibly ever could have made because when they come back next year, not only are they come back with the people who one invested money in that two are people who are just curious to see what multiverses was up to in the past couple of months. And they're going to come back in a position where they know how much content they need to drop. They're coming with like a damn near nine month surplus plus more of, of, of characters, of mechanics, of game modes, of skins, cosmetics, all that stuff to optimize their experience. This was this was the right move for them. And if people are bashing them for, again, taking 
that very first step out and realizing, hey, cool, this is the end of our road for right now. We need to come out and polish and be sharp because when we actually do step out for the first time in full in in, in full swing, we want it to be correct. Like y'all gotta y'all gotta pack it up, bro. Y'all gotta pack it up and at least cut them some slack. I really do think that this will be a solid experience. And what this development team has shown time and time again is that they're gonna be responsive to what they need and they're gonna be responsive to what the people need. You know what I'm saying? So at, at the end of the day, they got their ear to the streets. They know what's best for them. They know. I think they know what's best for their experience and the players who are enjoying it. So, uh, again, one of the few times I've seen where it's like, yo, I fully agree with them shutting down the beta because what the hell do you need this for? You know what I'm saying? At this point, when you've already got everything you need to develop and be better and just and workshop it until it's damn near perfect when you come out in 2024. So, mm -hmm. so like to, to people bashing this like bro like multiverses is going to be back they're gonna come back you know what i'm saying they're gonna be back stronger than ever watch when they come back in 2024 they're gonna have every every character you saw from the beta they're gonna have even more and i bet you money their content drop schedule is gonna be so much more consistent because they had this time in the break to say hey we know what we want to drop we have more time to develop this character and see how this works like they had problems interpreting giz in, in, interpreting gizmo into the player base because his his play style was different and so they had to make those tweaks on the fly think about how much pressure is laid off of them now to internally test tweaks they'll have game testers they can really flesh out a lot of characters and stuff by the time we're seeing it and also at this point as they keep stuff internal they can add the mystery factor back into their game because if they if they go at launch with all the characters that they that people caught from that data mine if they if they just drop all the characters at launch or at least have them in the first few uh, uh, months of launch they can add way more characters on the back end and actually surprise people actually had that surprise that mystery factor back of the huge speculation what we saw at the beginning of multiverse like oh what's the roster going to be like what's it going to be like like this and the third they can get that power back the more they're you know away from the market so all this does is help their case to be solid again when the game redrops in 2024 smart move and kudos to that team they did a good job in the start things things you know things happen they they won some they lost some but they live to see another day and that's the point yeah I really hope this. I really hope that everything goes well over there. Because the thing is, like, another thing you also we have to think about is just like you don't know what the higher ups made them do. You know, like you don't know. Like maybe they wanted to close down, but they were like, no, we're making so much money, or we have so much buzz around us. Why would we? Why would we close this down now? Um, and it's just it's a sticky situation. We don't have all the information. All like all we can say is that them working on the game is the best thing for the game. That is the only thing that we can say for a fact. Um, I think that the game in and of itself was not in the best state before it went away. And I can't wait to see what happens when it comes back. Uh, I don't see the game not. I know that the game's popularity may not be at the same peak it was when it first released. Watch but I it, do watch it get closer, though. Watch it get closer. I ain't going to lie. It will be better. It, it'll be it, in range. That's the thing is that it's really tough because it was it, it set a record. That's mm -hmm. the that's why I'm not like I I don't want to hold my breath and be like we're gonna get a hundred thousand people back in here because it set a record and then it kind of died out mm -hmm. and that's I think that people are gonna re tap back in I think some people are gonna re re download or replay it their marketing push is gonna have to be insane yeah. but I I do I do believe that there is space for them I believe that there's a lot of space for them in this in this market because it, they don't really have a lot of competition because at the end of the day. Who's going to compete with them? Nintendo? The, the Nintendo's really just competing with themselves mm -hmm. uh, at this they're, point. They're so. their own space at this stage in the game. And yeah, I, I agree. Look at how the out, things are outlaid. This year we're getting this year we're getting Street Fighter. This year we're getting like Guilty Gear has already like, you know, come through. So many fighting games, so many big fighting games are coming through now. And Mortal Kombat might come this year as well. Like you're getting big fighting games here. Tekken 8 probably going to release like next year. You know what I'm saying? That and multiverses. If you space yourself out enough, one, you'll have enough of a good clearing in the FGC, FGC space. And on top of that, if your marketing is right, if your marketing is actually super solid and you really get involved and get stuck in, if if Warner Brothers really gives them support, they can hit in those ranges again. I, I fully believe that. Yeah, I think that they're going to do pretty. I think they're going to do pretty well. Um, and I think I I want them to. I hope I hope. For the best if, if any company if any game does well i hope it's, it's this one um the only the only thing that i'm concerned about about for them is that in the free to play market space there is no competition 
until Riot drops their game. Mm, and that, yeah, that is L. gonna be the one that is gonna be the one that might that might be like I wouldn't even worry about Smash because yeah, I don't think that's the Smash, gonna be direct competition. Project L gonna yeah. be direct comp. That's that's direct comp. Because even though they're different fighting game, uh fighting games in general, both of them are free to play fighting games. Mm-hmm. And I think that the people who are looking for free games are gonna wanna grind one more mm-hmm. than the they, other. They're so. gonna make a choice. Yeah. That's a very good point, honestly. Yeah, like, don't take too long now. Multiverse, yeah. don't take too long now. No, 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 no dilly dally. You guys, you guys have a good, you guys still have a good head start, but understand that there are, Facts. there are people waiting in the, in the, the right in machine, the, the right yeah. machines in the, like a, like a hippo in the lake. And they can just watch you just like, yeah. And look at, look at every Riot game that's been released thus far. Um, when you think of, when you think of the only game that I think isn't as popular that ride has released was Legends of Runtaro, which is a card game. But that's but still got that's still it's, got it's audience. A, still yeah, got it, audience. It's a card game. I'm not expecting to see it everywhere. But Valorant is all over the Caught place. Up. League of Legends is League of Legends. Took the lead. Um, so now we're they're waiting for an MMO and they're waiting for a fighting game. So Project L, if if it's if it's consistent, the if it's got that consistent riot quality, it might be tough for mm-hmm. multiverses. Mm-hmm. I, I agree. But yeah, multiverses, you got time. But you don't got too much time. That's all I'm saying. So do what you need to do. We'll see you in 2024. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. All right. But that's all the notes we got on the pod today. Anything anything that we might have missed? Any any lingering stories that uh, just slipped slip past us? Uh, not that I can think of. Um, no, yeah. The only, thing, the only thing that I think we didn't talk about was just um, Diablo 4 is going to be a really good game. If the if the beta Oh yeah, I forgot about the alpha. I, I forgot. Like, we told we mentioned it like a little bit. <laughs> yeah. If the beta is anything like the base game, it seems like it has the same addicting Diablo formula. Um I'm saying this because I I got one character to max level. Well, not my, I got him to like 24, but I stopped playing because I didn't want to get to max level. Um and then I got like I had I think I made a second character that was like at level 10. And that was in a weekend. I don't really, pl- I don't, I don't get locked in like that. That game was very addicting. Um, I think that game is going to be phenomenal. Game of the year contender, perhaps, but I feel like the, the the genre is just too niche. But that game is is something else. I think that that I thought this this game wasn't going to be as good. I thought it was going to be like, oh, if you're a Diablo fan, you're going to like it. But that might be one of those games where it it sucks more people in than uh, just Diablo fans. Yeah, I ah I hear it. I hear it. No, nah, I I'm I'm probably gonna tap in, bro. It might be a time to tap in for real. I can't even lie to y'all. I would say this is the one. This is the one to tap into. I'm I'm gonna get addicted, boy. I'm gonna get addicted. I'm ready. I'm I, I'm actually here for it. But yeah, uh, uh, my any news story for me? Oh, all I know is um, hey, if y'all see any of that extra that extra what's the name uh Final Fantasy 16 gameplay, just know it's looking sexy, looking mighty sexy. I ain't gonna lie to you here. It's looking scrum diddly umptious. And if you ain't ready, get ready. That's all I needed to tell you. But yeah, that aside from that, that's all I got for this episode of No Cool Down Podcast. Any closing notes went before we get up out of here? Uh drink your water, uh play your games, and don't listen to what the haters have to say. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Hey, uh my 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 closing. My closing notes is uh, whenever you were in a relationship and then she asked it, what are we? Just say we're an open beta. We might close it for a little bit. See what happens. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> just in case, you know what I'm saying? Keep that in your back pocket just in case some things go left, man. Say we open beta, you know what I'm saying? We just figuring it out, you know what I'm saying? Working out the, the patches and stuff. We might have to close it down for a little bit, but we'll get it to work. But no, for real, make sure you check us out um, on all podcast platforms spotify apple podcast rate us five stars there just search up no cool down we will be right there also available on other various platforms including google Podcasts and stitcher uh catch us on the youtube as well youtube.com slash at no cool down a bunch of new content some exclusive so you do not want to miss it is going to be on that channel so make sure you tap in a lot of good stuff going on over there make sure you check out when easy all this content at w-o-t-a-k-u channel that's w-o-t-a-k-u channel and at when easy on all social platforms to get your good fix on when easy content make sure you check out at king v i i i uh go on twitter uh at you know at 
K X N G V I I. Uh, and it, I'm about to say uh, one more I. And go tell him, have a speedy recovery on your stub toe. Please go tell him, have a speedy recovery on your stub toe if you're listening to this. Um, you know what I'm saying? He'll be back sooner than later. Make sure you check out at that man trip on all, uh, you know what I'm saying? Audio platforms, all that good stuff like that. All, all whatever stuff. Kick, Messenger Pigeon. If I'm on, if I'm on the tube, that's not where I'm at. Not yet. They haven't paid me that much. But with that being said, this has been episode.